Oh. oh, welcome everybody. Good morning. Good morning. We are C M S D. And we would like to welcome you today to our primary pajama party. We look forward to learning with you. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Miss Maslowski from William Rainey Harper School. And today I'm going to read to you one of my very, very favorite stories ever. Come along, I brought some friends to join me in our story today. Look carefully at our story. Hmm, looking at that picture. What do you think this story is going to be about? Hmm. I see a little boy in his bed, but I also see something hidden under his bed. Hmm. Do you think that little boy is going to be scared? Hmm. I don't know. Do you think he's excited? Could be. We're going to have to read and find out. The title or name of our story is there's an alligator under my bed. And this is written by one of my most favorite authors and illustrator, Mercer Mayer. Now, what does an author do? You're right, an author writes the story. And what does an illustrator do? Draws the pictures, very good. And Mercer Mayer did both in our story. All right, sit back and relax and listen to our story. There's an alligator under my bed. There used to be an alligator under my bed. When it was time to go to sleep, I had to be very, very careful. Hmm. He's not going underneath that bed or near it, created a plank to climb up because I knew it was there. But whenever I looked, he hid or something. So I call mom and dad. Mom, dad, he's yelling as loud as he can yell. but they never saw it. It was up to me. I just had to do something about that alligator. I wonder what he's gonna do. What do you think? So I went to the kitchen to get some alligator bait. I filled a paper bag full of things alligators like to eat. Do you think that's a good idea? I put a peanut butter sandwich, some fruit, and the last piece of pie in the garage. I put cookies down the hall and I left fresh vegetables on the stairs. What do you think his plan is? I put a soda and some candy next to my bed. Then I watched and I waited. And sure enough, out he came to get something to eat. Then I hid in the hall closet. I followed him down the stairs. I followed him down the hall. And when he crawled into the garage, I slammed the door and locked it. Then I went to bed. There was a 
and even any mess to clean up. Now that there is an alligator in the garage, hmm, I wonder if my dad will have any trouble getting in his car tomorrow morning. I'll just leave him a note. Dear Dad, there is an alligator in the garage. If you need help, wake me up. Warning! Be careful. So that little boy did a fabulous job trying to think of a way to get the alligator out from under his bed. Is that what you thought was going to happen in the story? Hmm. Well, I knew he was out or not under the bed anymore at the beginning. So I was curious to find out how the little boy got him out. That was a great plan. Thanks for sharing that book with me. We're going to do a fun activity with alligators now. So let me show you my alligator. I made my alligator out of a clothespin. I just colored it green, added some teeth on the sides, and glued it on, and glued some eyeballs on. And we're going to use our alligator to practice some positional words, or words to find where things could be. Now in our story, the alligator had a bed, was hiding under the bed. If you don't have a bed, you could use your hand. If you don't have an alligator, you could use your fingers. And we're going to practice putting our alligator into different places around our bed. Now I made an alligator, so I'm going to use my alligator. And I have a, we're going to use that to be my bed. All right, are you ready to practice with me? All right. I'm going to put the alligator on the bed. He is sitting on the bed. Where is that alligator at? You are right. He is on the bed. Take your alligator off. Next. Put the alligator under the bed. There he is, sneaking out from under the bed. Where is that alligator at? You are right. He is under the bed. Can you put your alligator over the bed? Hmm, not on the bed. We want him over. So you got to put him up way up high. Very good. Where is that alligator at? He is over the bed. Great job. Can you put your alligator next to the bed? He's next to the bed. Very good. Here's a tricky one. Can you put your alligator behind the bed. Can you see him? No, nope, he's hiding behind the bed and he could peek out to look at you. Where is that alligator at? Very good. He is behind the bed. Can you put your alligator in front of the bed? There he is. Great job. That alligator is in front of the bed. Where is he at? In front of the bed. Excellent job. I was so excited that you could read my favorite story with me today, and I hope you have a great time with our rest of our teachers. Hmm. I wonder what Mrs. Burdett has in store for you. Let's find out. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you, Ms. Maslowski. My name is Mrs. Burdett. I'm the pre-K teacher at Douglas MacArthur Girls Leadership Academy. Thank you families and students for joining us today. Today, I'm gonna talk to you about, well, let me give you a little hint. 
Remember the little boy mm -hmm. in Miss Maslowski's story? He was setting a trail of something for the alligator to follow. Of food, that's right. He's setting a, ta a trail of food. Well, come on with me. We're gonna go get some food from my refrigerator and we're going to do something with it. All right, let's grab some things from the refrigerator. You might recognize some of these items. You can see them as I'm collecting them. All right, now meet me back on over and we'll keep on learning. All right, let's see what foods we got from our refrigerator today. I found a banana, an orange, an apple, carrot. What that is? That's a radish. A strawberry. A potato. A lemon. Hmm, how fuzzy that one is. This is a kiwi. Celery. Cauliflower and a blueberry. Now, let's figure out if we can do some sorting. Sorting is when we can group things in a certain way. What are some ways we might group the foods that I just took out of my refrigerator? Good, we might sort them by color. So you might find the apple the radish and the strawberry because they are all, what color? <laughs> Red, sorry about that. You might find the orange and the carrot and group these together because they are both the color orange. You might find the banana you might turn the apple around this way. And the lemon and group those by the color yellow. They're all yellow. And maybe you'll find the potato and the kiwi and group them in the group orange or brown because they are both brown. Oh. Well, we're going to do a little bit of deeper sorting. We're gonna look inside of our fruits and vegetables and see if we can sort them by another way, by if they have seeds or if they do not have seeds. Usually we say fruits have seeds in them and vegetables do not have seeds in them. So let's see if we can figure that out. Now, usually oranges have seeds but I guess when I was at the store, I bought seedless oranges. So my oranges do not have seeds today. But normally, an orange has seeds. Let's cut open the apple. I'm gonna cut it this way. I think this is a fun way to cut an apple if you're looking for seeds. You'll see why. There are seeds. And look at, we can see that a star is exposed and inside those little openings are seeds. So the apple has seeds. Let's cut our lemon next. Oh yes. I see seeds in our lemon. Can you see those? Good. Let's try the banana. Those are little seeds in the banana. You probably didn't even know that, but those are. Here's something interesting. Have you ever looked closely at a strawberry? All these 
these little tiny dots on the outside of the strawberry are seeds. So if you would take those off and dry them out, you can plant them and grow strawberries. This is my kiwi. Oh, look at all the seeds inside of the kiwi. All those little black dots are seeds, and we can eat those seeds. You ever looked inside of a blueberry? Let's see, can't remember. Which way do I need to cut the blueberry? <gasps> there, there are seeds inside of the blueberry. Oh, we just pop those in our mouths and eat them. They're delicious. Hmm, this is the cauliflower. You think the cauliflower will have seeds? I don't see any seeds. No seeds in the cauliflower. Let's see the potato. There are no seeds inside of a potato. A carrot? Does a carrot have seeds? Hmm. The carrot does not have any seeds. And, hmm, how about the radish? The radish does not have any seeds inside of it. Hmm. And celery. There are no seeds inside of a celery stalk. Sorting foods by color is one option, but there's another way that we can also sort our food. We can sort them by whether they are vegetables or fruits. And one way to tell if they are fruits or vegetables is we can look inside. If the foods have seeds, they are generally fruits. If they have no seeds, they are usually vegetables. So let's look inside of our foods to see what they are. The apple, let's open up the apple. Does the apple have seeds? Yes. So I am a fruit. Does lettuce have seed? No, that's a vegetable. Yeah. The orange has seeds. I am a fruit. The kiwi has seeds. I am also a fruit. The carrot. The carrot does not have seeds. I am a vegetable. The cauliflower. No seeds. Vegetables. The potato. No seeds. Also a vegetable. The lemon has seeds. This is a fruit. The radish, no seeds. That's a vegetable. The strawberry, can you see all those seeds on the outside? That's a fruit. The celery, no seeds. Vegetable. The, oops, excuse me. Let me try to get this one. The kiwi is a fruit. I already did the kiwi, didn't I? And one more. The blueberry. The blueberry also has seeds. That is a fruit. So sorting by whether it is a vegetable or a fruit is another way that we can sort our foods. Now, if you want to sort some vegetables or fruits at home and you don't have fresh fruits or vegetables, to sort, you can maybe use some of your play toys if you have play food at home. 
and you can sort them either by color or if they have seeds or no seeds you can find some of the ads you get in your mail and you can find cut out the pictures and find the ones that are fruits cut them out find the vegetables cut them out and sort them into groups that way another idea you might have cereal boxes or pop-tart boxes any kind of boxes at home and these actually make great puzzles so what you're going to do is you're going to take out your empty box and you are going to cut off the front of it and then you can draw lines on it and this would make your own puzzle you might also use the back of your puzzle or the back of the board and make an alphabet puzzle these make great puzzles because they are thicker and you can use them over and over again and then when you're all done, just put them in a little zip bag and you can continue to play it the next day and the next day. And you can time yourself, see if you can put the puzzle together faster the next time. Well, I can't wait to see what Miss Kitchen has in store for us today. So I'm gonna pass it off to her. There's an alligator under my bed. That makes me think of a song that I sometimes sing in my classroom it's about five monkeys and an alligator. Five little monkeys swinging in a tree, teasing Mr. Alligator, you can't catch me. Along came Mr. Alligator very quietly and snatched the monkey right out of that tree. Four little monkeys swinging in a tree, teasing Mr. Alligator, you can't catch me. Along came Mr. Alligator very quietly and snatched a monkey right out of that tree. Three little monkeys swinging in a tree, teasing Mr. Alligator, you can't catch me. Along came Mr. Alligator very quietly and snatched a monkey right out of that tree. Two little monkeys swinging in a tree, Teasing Mr. Alligator, you can't catch me. Along came Mr. Alligator very quietly and snatched a monkey right out of that tree. One little monkey swinging in a tree. Teasing Mr. Alligator, you can't catch me. Along came Mr. Alligator very quietly and snatched a monkey right out of that tree. There were no more monkeys swinging in the tree. At the beginning of our song, there were five monkeys. Eventually, by the end of the song, there were no more monkeys swinging in the tree. Hmm. We started with five and then it slowly decreased and the numbers kept getting smaller. Some of the monkeys were going away. We call that subtraction. So we're gonna dig a little deeper today and we're going to subtract using some tens frames. And we'll write our number sentence so that we can see our story in number form. Let's look at our first tens frame. This frame is completely filled. I know that there are five monkeys up top and there are five monkeys at the bottom. And if I count those monkeys, there should be 10. So let's count and check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. There are 10 monkeys. Now I'm gonna use my cross out marks to show that some monkeys are going away. One monkey went away. Two monkeys went away. Three monkeys went away. How many monkeys went away? Three. And when I want to show that some are going away, I'm going to use this symbol. It is called a minus or subtraction sign. So we have 10 
we're going to show that how many went away? Three. So 10 minus three equals how many monkeys are left? Well, if I look at the top, I see there are five at the top because I remember there are five boxes. I can count on to see how many more are at the bottom. So we have five, six, seven. How many monkeys are left? Seven monkeys. So our number sentence for this picture says 10 minus three equals seven. Let's try another one. This time we're going to use more monkeys. There are 10 monkeys. And if I add a few more, that will be 11, 12, 13, 14. So there are 10 monkeys and I added some more. I added four more. There are 14 monkeys. So I'm going to write that number first because that number tells me how many monkeys we're starting with. Now I'm going to show some are going away. many monkeys went away? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to use my minus sign again, and I'm going to write the number seven because that's the number that tells how many went away. How many monkeys are left? That's easy. I know the top box is completely filled, so that's five, six, seven. How many monkeys are left? Seven again. Great job with that one. Now let's try a different number sentence. This time I'm gonna use some girl monkeys. My boxes at the top are completely filled. My boxes at the bottom are completely filled. I know that five are at the top and five are at the bottom. So how many monkeys is that all together? Yes, that's 10, but I'm gonna add some more. I originally had 10, and then I added two more monkeys. How many is that? 10, 11, 12. I'm gonna write the number 12 because that number tells how many monkeys we have. That's how many we're starting out with. Now, I'm gonna cross out some of those monkeys. How many monkeys went away? Yes, three monkeys went away. So my number sentence is 12, take away or minus three equals, how many monkeys are left? Well, let's see. We have five at the top still. So we're going to start by saying five, six, seven, eight, nine. How many monkeys are left? There are nine monkeys. 
So I'm going to write that answer at the end of my number sentence. So our number sentence now says 12 minus 3 equals 9. Let's try another one. This time I'm going to add some boy monkeys with my girl monkeys. So I have 5 and 5. That makes 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Ooh, let's add one more. 15. So how many monkeys do we have? 15. And if I take away some, how many did I take away? One, two, three, four, five. So we're going to make our minus sign again. And then we're going to write the number 5 again. So if I have 15 and I take away 5, how many monkeys do I have left? Well, it looks like my tens frame is completely filled. And I remember there are 5 up top. And there are 5 at the bottom. And I know if I count those all together, there are going to be 10. But I'm going to double check to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are ten monkeys left. We're going to try one more. This time, we're going to use some monkeys and alligators. I can't say I'm adding subtracting monkeys and I can't just say I'm subtracting alligators so what would we call these things if they're mixed up like this we will call them animals so we're going to be finding out how many animals are left so first we need to figure out how many animals do we have all together I see five alligators at the top and there are five monkeys at the bottom. And I remember that five and five more is 10. So I'm gonna start counting with 10 because I know there are 10 monkeys in, monkeys and alligators in the tens frame. So let's count on 11, 12, 13. So there are 13 animals all together. Now, some of them are going away. How many animals went away? Let's count them. One, two, three, four. What do I write next? I have 13, but I need to make a symbol. Yes, I need to write my minus sign. And then I'm going to write four because there are four animals going away. So we had 13 animals and then four animals went away. How many animals are left? 
This is five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine animals are left. Subtraction is so much fun. I wonder what Mrs. Anderson will be teaching you today. Oh, Mrs. Anderson. Thanks, Mrs. Kitchens. I'm Mrs. Anderson, physical education teacher at Douglas MacArthur Girls Leadership Academy. Welcome back for another week of moving. So today, I brought along my two friends, Mr. Rory and Miss Cordelia, to help out with our activities. Got my stuffed animal. I'm gonna hold my animal out in front of me. I'm gonna hold it to the side. I'm gonna hold it behind me. I'm gonna switch hands, bring it around and in front and next to me and behind, next to me and in front and next to me and behind and around. I am taking my stuffed animal. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to focus on catching it. Can you toss it with one hand and catch it with the other? Can you toss, clap, and catch? <laughs> Theme for today is what? Alligators. Alligators. This activity is going to be catch the alligator tail. So I have played four animals here. And these four animals, if you were to connect them with a line, what shape would they make? A square. A square. Good job. So those are going to be our boundaries. Now, an alligator tail, I'm going to borrow your noodle. An alligator tail is so big that it's always going to be down on the ground. And Rory, you're going to place your alligator tail behind you and you're going to hold it with one hand. Now, Rory, I'm going to try to catch your alligator tail before you catch mine. So I am going to try to move and you, now remember, even though you're trying to stop me from grabbing, you are still trying to grab mine. You're going to try to catch Rory's blue tail before he catches your three. On your mark, get set, go. So this activity here that we're going to do is a jumping activity. Cordelia is going to slide that alligator. Oh, look at that. Rory's got two jumps, three jumps, four jumps, five jumps, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Hey, Cordelia, did you have a fun time today? Hey, Rory, did you have a good time today? Yes. I did, too. I had an awesome time. And we hope that you did also. So, you know what they say? Later, alligator. Hello, boys and girls. Thanks for joining us again. Today, we're going to explore the verbs or the action words in our story. We're even going to add the suffix ed to our words to find out how we can write them or say them in the past tense. Let me explain what I mean. If we take the word look, that is in the present tense. I look at a picture of my family. Now, 
I might go to bed that night. And when it's time to wake up the next morning, I would now need to use past tense of that verb if I'm talking about what I did with that picture yesterday. So I would then add an ed suffix, which changes the meaning of the word to past tense. And now my word would be looked. I looked at a picture of my family yesterday. Looked. I invited some friends along today to teach us about some action words or verbs and their past tense using the ed suffix. Call. I am going to call my grandma. Hello. Hi. How are you? yesterday. Did you notice how we added the ed to the end of the word call? To change it to the word called, check out this next verb. Fill. I'm going to fill my glass of water. I just remembered, yesterday I filled a glass of water. Watch. I am going to watch a movie. Yesterday, I watched a movie. Wait. I have to wait a long time until the cookies finish baking. Good night, Mom and Dad. I love you. Yesterday, I waited a long time for my cookies. Follow. I'm going to follow my dog on the walk. Good night, Mom and Dad. I love you.
Let's check out one more verb. Lock. I need to lock the door before I go to bed. Good thing I locked the door last night. Thanks for joining us, friends. You really did a fantastic job teaching us about action words and how to put them in past tense with the suffix ed. Think of as many verbs as you can that change to the past tense with using the ed suffix. Well, boys and girls, I sure had a fabulous time learning with you today. Let's go visit Mrs. Dunlap and learn some more. Bye. I am wide awake and ready to learn. How about you? Good morning. It's me, Miss Dunlap from Bureau Dual Language Academy. I am so glad you decided to come and learn with me today, especially on pajama day. Wasn't that such a great story we heard earlier? There's an alligator under my bed. That boy sure was a clever character solving that problem with the alligator, wasn't he? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna talk about why stories are so enjoyable and it's using all of those story elements. Do you know what story elements are? They're all the great pieces and parts that come together and make a story fun to read. So it makes a book so exciting or so enjoyable or funny. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Before we get started, I want you to go ahead and get a piece of paper though, okay? All right, let's go, it's time to learn. Let's start with the setting. The setting is when and where a story takes place, such as the school, the zoo, the forest, or maybe someone's home. It's also when the story takes place, at nighttime or bright and early when you wake up, or the season of winter. So we know that the setting of a story is when and where the story takes place, okay? It's the surroundings, right? It sets the stage for when and where the story is going to happen, okay? So we're gonna add an arm movement, a motion to that word to help us remember, okay? Are you ready? Can you say it and do it with me? Setting. Good job. Do you remember the setting of our story? There's an alligator under my bed. Do you remember where our story took place? It did. It took place at their home. And we know that because, yes, because the boy was in his bed and his bed was in his bedroom and his bedroom was in their home, exactly. Now, do you remember when this story took place? Hmm, it did take place at night. We know this because the boy was trying to go to sleep. He was already in his pajamas. And even after he trapped that alligator in the garage, he went right back to bed. It was nighttime. Let's look at characters. They're the people or animals in your story, such as a pirate or princess or a family. It could be anyone. We learned that characters are the people or animals in a story. Well, we're people, so go ahead and take those thumbs and point to yourself. Good job. I want you to use that motion to help you remember what the word characters mean. Are you ready? I want you to say it and do it with me. Characters. Okay, do you remember who the characters were in our story? There's an alligator under my bed. The boy, his parents. You're right, that silly alligator. 
you remember who the main character was? You know, the character who had to solve a problem. Which character in our story had to solve a problem? The boy, he was our main character. So what is the problem? Well, that's what goes wrong in the story. And it's easy to identify because that's when somebody wanted something, but, uh-oh, that somebody is our main character, the boy. The boy wanted to go to sleep, but there was an alligator under his bed. And when something goes wrong, we are not happy. So can you cross your arms for me and show me problem? That's gonna be our motion, are you ready? Problem. Well, the solution is easy. That's how the problem is solved. It's all better now. We fix the problem, we're smiling and happy. So the solution is how we fix the problem in a story. And when we've got a problem, we're not happy, right? Mm -mm. But when we've got the solution and we fix the problem, we solved the problem, thumbs up, everything's a-okay. We've got the solution, right? Can you show me solution? How did the boy fix his problem? He solved his problem by setting a trap for the alligator and locked the alligator in the garage. You're correct. The boy was able to go right back up to his bedroom and go to sleep. Let's go to the plot. The plot involves all of the events in your story. It's everything that happens in your story from the beginning through the middle and to the end. In our story, first, the boy was trying to go to sleep, but there was an alligator under his bed. Next, he set some alligator bait, a trail of food. Then he tricked the alligator and locked him in the garage. And finally, the boy could go to sleep. So the plot is just all of the events in the story, starting from the beginning, through the middle, all the way to the end. Okay, do you remember that piece of paper that I asked you to get earlier? Go ahead and get it out right now. Okay. While you're getting your paper, I just want to remind families that if you don't have enough time to finish this activity or if it moves along too quickly on this episode, you are able to catch this on YouTube, okay? So I want you to take that piece of paper and fold it in half, hot dog style again. Oh, Miss Dunlop loves folding her papers, doesn't she? And then we're gonna fold it one more time down, but only one time this time, all right? So fold it down once so it's a bigger box, okay? When you unfold your paper, you should have four separate boxes. Okay, I want you to look at the top two boxes of your paper. We have the word setting and characters. Go ahead and write those right now. Make sure they're at the top of each box so that we can place a drawing, okay? We talked about the setting being when or where a story takes place. So for when, I always think of a clock. So I'm going to draw a clock. Now I know I'm missing numbers right here and that's okay. These are details that we can add later, okay? And then you can go ahead and share this with your family. Now this is the when of the setting. We have to talk about the where. And in our story today, our story took place in a, that's right, in a house. So I'm gonna go ahead, put a little door here, a window up here. And you can add more details to this later, okay? The characters are the people or animals in the story. So I'm going to go ahead, and just like I said, we can add details later, okay? You can add details later. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and draw some people Okay, go ahead and write problem and solution. These are the bottom two boxes. Make sure you write the words at the very top of each box so that we have plenty of space to go ahead and draw our pictures or symbols to help us remember what the problem or solution of the story is, okay? 
So remember the problem is when our main character wants something, but, oh, so just like today, that boy, he wanted to go to sleep, but that alligator was under his bed. So was he happy with the problem? Nope. So I'm gonna go ahead and for now, oh, I'm going to go ahead and draw a very sad face. Maybe later today, you can draw a picture down here of the alligator underneath the bed. What happens when we have a solution and we have solved or fixed the problem? Are we frowning or unhappy anymore? No, we're smiling because we have solved the problem. We now have a solution. We're smiling. Maybe... Later today, you can draw a picture of the little boy in bed sleeping. Super happy, huh? Put a smile on his face. Excellent, great job. You guys did an amazing job creating your anchor charts today. An anchor chart is just a learning tool. It's something you can look back at or refer to to help you remember the information you learned today. So every time you read a brand new story that's make-believe or fiction, you can look back at this anchor chart to help you remember Hmm, when I read this story, what is the setting? And who are my characters? Wonder what the problem is. And what's the solution to my problem? I'm so proud of you. It was such a wonderful time today learning. Thank you for joining me, but all this work, I think I'm gonna go ahead and rest my head a little bit on my pillow. Until next time. Thank you for joining our primary pajama party today. We hope you had a great time. Make sure you're getting your 10 to 12 hours of sleep every night. And we can't wait to see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.